Good evening from Tabernacle Baptist Church, Newbridge, to our gospel service. And we give you a warm welcome this evening. I'm just going to read a few verses to you from the second book of Timothy. The second book of Timothy is chapter 4, and I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 8. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing, preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own hearts and lusts, heap unto themselves sins having itching ears. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and make full proof of thy ministry. I want us to take special attention to these verses now. They are well known, for I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day, and not to me only, but all those who love his appearing. And just I want to read a verse from Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. Shall we just pray together? Lord, we do thank you for this opportunity of being here again this evening, to hear your word and to be in your house. Your word is forever settled in heaven. And you said, Lord Jesus, that the heavens and the earth will pass away, but your word will never pass away. We ask your blessing now upon the congregation and upon all who are listening to this gospel message this evening. We pray, Lord, that we shall come closer to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, that we shall feel his presence here amongst us. We have such a wonderful Saviour, and we want everybody to know how wonderful he is. We ask your peace upon us now, in the Saviour's name. Shall we stand and sing together, Pass me not, O gentle Saviour. Hear my prayer today.
Working for Christ in the community. These are the announcements this week at Tabernacle Baptist Church Newbridge. Every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday at 9.30am we have our daily devotions. Please join us to start your day with God's Word. Links are available on our Facebook page. Please join our online Bible study, learning lessons from a great cloud of witnesses with Pastor Peter Cho every Wednesday at 6.30pm. Once every fortnight on Thursday at 7pm for 7.30pm, there is an online deacons meeting. Please note that this is only for the diaconate of Tabernacle Baptist Church Newbridge. On Friday at 5.30pm, please join our Dancing Through Quarantine to praise and worship with our digital worship dance team. Also on Friday at 7.30pm, we have our online fellowship Zoom meeting. Join us for a time of fellowship and blessing. Join us for our Sunday online services. At 11am we have our Sunday morning family service and at 6pm we have our Sunday evening preaching service. Every Sunday afternoon we have our online Sunday school. Children aged 10 plus can join from 2pm, whilst children aged 5 to 9 can join us from 3pm. Please contact Pastor Peter or Lynn Champion for more information and the invitation email. Last but not least, please protect the NHS and each other by social distancing, washing your hands and in doing so, save lives. Please pray for the global COVID-19 pandemic, national leaders, NHS and key workers, the sick, people in tears and God's church and people. Stay safe, God bless and thank you. Let us come then now to the word of God. As those verses I read to you earlier on, the Christian life is likened to three things. It's likened to a walk, it's likened to a race, and it's likened to a fight or a battle. As we, we read the scriptures, we see the importance, especially in the early chapters of the book of Genesis, of those who walked with God. How important it is to walk with God. On occasions, we see people in groups some are in front, they might be out walking together as a group in front, a group behind, and yet in the center there are two people who are very close together. They're in close communion. They are walking actually with each other. And this evening we need to come closer to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We think of the, the chorus we sing, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. The first instance we have of the voice of God walking. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3, the voice and God was walking in the Garden of Eden, the voice of God, and he was walking in the Garden of Eden, and he was speaking to Adam. The voice of God walking, not God himself, because God dwells in the light which no man can approach. But God's voice was heard in the Garden of Eden, and he was speaking to Adam and Eve, especially saying, Adam, where are you? Of course, he had broken God's law. And we cannot hide from God. God knew exactly where he was. And he asked the question, Adam, where are you? Could I ask you this evening, in light of the scriptures and in, in the light of the gospel, where are you when you think of your need of a saviour and need of salvation through our Lord and saviour, Jesus Christ? When we go to chapter 5, we have another reference to someone who walked with God. His name was Enoch. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. You as a family man, you as a righteous man, you as a godly man, he lived closer, he lived close to the Lord, and he walked with God. Marvelous to be walking with someone. And so Enoch drew near to God. He come closer. And we need this evening as Christians, to come closer to our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Now, this is remarkable. The Bible says he walked with God and God took him. He was translated into heaven. That is absolutely remarkable. He was the first man to bypass death. He was taken 
to heaven. And he speaks in the book of Jude. That's the, cha- the book just before the last book in the Bible, Revelation. And this is what Enoch says. You see, he was the seventh from Adam. And seven in the scriptures is perfection. So he was a perfect, he lived a perfect life before God to the best of his ability. He was committed to God. He wanted communion with God. He wanted fellowship with God. And he had another revelation. He had a revelation of the appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Not only did he experience ascension up into heaven, but he says in the book of Jude, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of his saints. And so he had a revelation all those thousands of years before a revelation of Jesus coming to take his church into heaven. Because the Bible says, the trumpet shall sound and we shall be caught up and be forever with the Lord. We know also there was one other man who was translated and that was Elijah. And as Elijah and Elisha were going towards Jordan, the Bible says that Elijah was taken up into heaven by a whirlwind. How remarkable, how wonderful. In the 1950s, there was a well-known singer. His name was Mario Lanza, an Italian singer who lived in America. And in the 50s, he had a hit, a hit song. And it was a Christian song. And this was the song, I'll walk with God from this day on. His tender hand I lean upon. I pray to him. From this day, I will walk with God. Could I ask you this evening, could I appeal to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, will you walk with him? And you can commence today. You can start now by placing your trust in the Lord Lord Jesus. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation when you can walk with God. And that song has echoed down Over the years, a very popular song. And he speaks in that song about God having victory over death and that, and of life everlasting. I'll walk with God to the end. How remarkable. I think it was the Apostle John who said, I have no greater joy than see you in the church walking in truth. And he says, As we walk in the light, walking in the light of the gospel and of the scripture and of the word of God, as we walk in the light as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ, God's son, cleanses us from all sin. What a wonderful thought. Walking with the Lord. The second second thought I want to bring to you this evening is the Christian life is not only like a walk, but it's like a race. Now, In my own family, my brothers, my father, my auntie, and my grandfather, they were sports people. They were good runners. And my my younger brothers too, and we ran, ran in many competitions and races. And my father used to tell me, John used to say, if you're in a race, look straight in front of you at the tape. Do not look to the right or look to the left, but look straight ahead. I think it is in the book of Hebrews, if my memory uh, serves me correctly, uh, Paul is saying, as we see this great cloud of witnesses in chapter 11, those great men and women of God, he said, let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. And so it was, my father was right, you must look at the tape, do not be distracted. And so the Christian is in a race. This is not a race. This is not to break the world record. This is a race that you must endure. It's a difficult race. It's not an easy race. In 1954, in the Commonwealth Games, there was a British long-distance runner. His name was Jimmy Peters. And of course, at the end of every marathon race, the last lap would be done in the stadium. Jim Peters entered the stadium. He seemed to be at any moment ready to collapse. 
he got closer and closer to the tape and then he fell down. He collapsed. But someone, a spectator, got up and put him on his feet and he started to walk and he went past the tape. Jimmy Peters, he never won a medal, but he was determined to complete the race. We are in this race as Christians and there must be a determination in the face of all odds, in the face of weakness, disappointment, all the things that come against us. We must be determined to cross the tape with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We are looking unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith. And there's another runner. In the 1952 Olympic Games, there was a, a Czechoslovakian runner. His name was Emil Zatopek. One of the greatest runners that ever, one of the, the greatest long distance, driver, long distance runners that ever was. He represented Czechoslovakia. And he won three gold medals in, in those Olympic Games. And you know what? When he ran, you would think at any moment he would fall to the ground. He looked in such agony somehow and such pain. But there was such a determination in Zatopek, he would not give in. And as he came into the stadium, his body was, was shaken. He seemed to be weaving, but his eyes were fixed upon the tape, which was ahead. And he crossed the tape and won the gold medal. He was determined to gain the prize. And we will have the prize of the high court of Christ as we cross the tape. This prize is a crown of righteousness which the, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give us. In the old, remember in the olden days in Rome, they ran in the races and in Greece and they were given a laurel. But the laurel would pass away in a few days. It would, it would wither. But our crown is eternal. Our crown is everlasting which will be given to us, and not only to one person, but to all those who love is the period. And so Paul was determined to finish the race. Lastly, the Christian life is like a fight. It's like a battle. We are not in a physical battle in that sense. We are in a spiritual, a spiritual uh, battle. You will notice, though, in... Britain at the present time and throughout the world, there's a battle on. We know that the, that the researchers, the scientists are trying to find a cure for this virus. I believe there are many people in the world who are trying to find, in research, trying to find a cure for this virus to alleviate the pain and the suffering. Because we do not know, we do not know what it must be really like to be in that situation. It's a terrible thing. I do remember that when I was a boy in the war, we had to go to school with our gas masks on because of the threat of gas. And when the, when the alarm went, when the siren went, we had to go down into the cellar. That was a bit frightening. But somehow, this is something different. I feel in my own spirit, there's something different about this. I don't know what it is. But I think it's a warning. It's a warning that we are frail that humanity is frail. We are of the earth. We are of the ground. We are weak. But thank God, he is mighty. The Lord Jesus is mighty. And he will hold us with his great hand. And so there's a battle on against this disease. I do remember my, my first wife was taken very ill with TB when she was young. Now to have her lung removed. And yet a few weeks after, a few, a few weeks after, they had a cure. They'd worked so hard night and day to cure TB. And with 16 injections, they could save a man's life. And my wife had to have a lung removed because they never had a cure at that time. The worst disease of all, friends, is sin. To be enemies with, against God, to be against God. To be an enemy, Jesus 
has shown his love towards us upon the cross. And he has brought about the cure for our sins. He's the one who can deliver us from our bondage, from our sin, the Lord Jesus Christ. What a wonderful Savior he is. What a glorious Lord that he can deliver us from our sins. He's the one and only Redeemer. And so this battle is on. We're in a battle. We are fight, fighting uh, against one. He is called the enemy of ours. The thief comes. And when I look at this problem now in, in Wales and in Britain and the world, it, I'm reminded of the scripture. The thief comes to steal, to kill, destroy. But when we come to the gospel of Christ, it's the opposite. Jesus said, I've come to give life and to give that more abundantly. And so this abundant life can be found in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, this fight. I do remember, and you can remember, I'm sure, you can remember, I'm sure, that in Newbridge we've got a world champion. His name is Joe Kalzaki. Joe Kalzaki was, is the undisputed official champion, light heavyweight champion of the world, undefeated. Joe Kalzaki was my neighbor for 20 years. He was prepared to train. And a, isn't it, that when a person is in a race, when a person is in a race, you've got to cast off all, I've seen people say, going down to the welfare center, when I was a boy, and they'd have a jacket on, they'd have a, a, perhaps a scarf on, and the trainer would come and say, get that off, get the scarf off, get the coat off, get your shirt off. Go down to the vest and your pants. You are running in a race, you've got to be light. You've got to cast aside all those things that would hinder you. And there are many things which are stopping people from coming to Jesus Christ. I spoke to a man yesterday who came to my home. And I said, my friend, I give him my testimony. And, he, and, and yet he was indifferent, apathetic towards the gospel. Oh God, we've got to cast off those things that would hold us down and run the race which is before us. And we have to walk that walk. And when we come to this fight, we notice that Joe Kalzaki, this, this Newbridge boy, a local boy, who made this, 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 this little town famous, really, he was knocked down, I believe, five times in, in, in his career. And he was shaken on a number of occasions. And I could see his father in one, on, on one film was, was, and, and telling him to be careful, be wise. Do the right thing. If you're going to win, you've got to be wise. I, 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 he's instilling it in him. He's speaking to him. And he got back up. And he won the fight and won the championship. And that happened on a number of occasions. And yet he's well known. He's well known in New Vision and, and throughout Britain. Being an undefeated world champion. When I think of what I've been saying this evening, the most important thing that I want to say to you this evening is this. What will you do with the Lord Jesus Christ? The one who died for you upon the cross. The one who took part in the greatest fight of all. The fight against sin and death. And upon the cross, Jesus said in triumph, it is finished. He did not say, I am finished. It's the end for me. No, he said. He said, it is finished. Into thy hands I commit my spirit. He cried with a loud voice. People do not cry with a loud voice when they are dying. It is finished. The work is complete. The one thief on the one cross rejected Jesus. He hailed against him and railed against him. If you are the Christ, come down off the cross. And that's what many people are saying in the world. Is this the real Savior? Is this the real Messiah? They're questioning Jesus. He's always been questioned. But we know him this evening as our Lord and Savior. Thank God for that day when he came into our lives and into our hearts and transformed us by his mighty power. And we can say what a wonderful change in my life has been brought, has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I want to close with just this one chorus. When I think of our walk, as I mentioned Mario Lanza, was walking with God. Today we can, can commence that walk. 
I, we mentioned the race, and now we mentioned the fight. But here's the hymn. And it's, 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 one of the, it's a very well-known hymn. I want us to take it in. Fight the good fight with all thy might. Christ is thy strength. And Christ thy right. Lay hold on life. Can I appeal to you with all my heart this evening to lay hold of the gospel message. Believe it. O sinner, believe it. Receive the glad message. It's true. Trust now in the sanctified Savior. Salvation he offers to you. Fight the good fight with all thy might. Christ is thy strength and Christ thy life. Lay hold on life, and it shall be thy crown and joy eternally. Run the straight race through God's good grace. Lift up thine eyes and see his face. Life with its way before us lies. Christ is the strength and Christ the prize. This evening, make Jesus your prize. Fight the good fight of faith. Walk in the light. Run the straight race that will take you to heaven. May God bless you. I'm just going to ask you to stand now and sing this wonderful, this wonderful song. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. Shall we rise? Jesus, we do thank you for your word, and we pray that by your, your grace that we will walk with you, that we run this race with patience, and we will fight the good fight of faith. We ask your blessing upon our community, those who have problems and needs, we pray that you will undertake for them. Most of all, Lord, we would ask that people would come to know you as their Lord and Saviour. You are only a prayer away. We think of the scripture, believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You will be converted. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We pray now that your peace will be upon us all. Amen.